Welcome to Bigfoot Forensics. Today we're going to talk about wearing gloves, why they're important, best practices when putting them on, and taking them off. Yes, it can matter. Gloves can serve other uses too, other than impromptu water balloons and keeping your hands clean while you're eating barbecue. So let's find out what that is. <laughs> Whether you're burying a body, cleaning with style, collecting evidence at a crime scene, or just wearing them for fashion, gloves play a vital role. No matter what, they're there to help prevent contamination. That includes protecting you and protecting the evidence from you. Gloves must be properly stored in the field, and they have to be put on correctly. Every surface, every object within your scene is a potential reservoir for crucial evidence. Fingerprints trace DNA. Even minute fibers and hairs can serve as invaluable clues for investigators. The human body itself is a prolific source of contamination with skin cells, oils, and microbes that are constantly being shed. Unknown contaminants might be present on the surface you are collecting from. So without the barrier provided by gloves, the risk of inadvertently transferring contaminants from you onto the evidence is significantly heightened. This transfer potentially compromises the integrity of the entire investigation. It's essential to know how to properly store the gloves while on your investigation. Understanding how to correctly put on the gloves is also crucial. Take your time. I know you're excited that you found something, but slow down. You only get one chance to do this right. Don't worry about your phone ringing. This is a perfect excuse for you not to answer. So we've been talking about contaminating the evidence. What about cross-contamination? What do we mean by cross-contamination? In forensic analysis, maintaining the purity of each piece of evidence is paramount. So changing gloves between touching different evidence, um, that can be a great thing too. And I'm going to show you why we do this. So now's the time for some show and tell. Gloves. We all have them. We see them hanging out of the box here. It's really super simple. And I mean, it's super simple. We're worried about DNA contamination. We're worried about cross-contamination. We're worried about contaminating our gloves when we put them on. However, there are a few tips and tricks that we can do to mitigate that. One of them is pay attention to how you pull your glove out. You see that one that just went to the floor? We're not gonna use that one. But you see how I'm holding this right now? right by the cuff. It, we're not always going to be able to grab it by the cuff. But one of the things that we can do is after we put this glove on, very carefully not to touch the finger areas, we now know the areas that we've touched on this glove, right? We have it in our mind. We saw ourselves do it. So now we will go for the second glove. Oh, by the cuff again. I'm telling you, after a while, you get used to being able to do that. Sure. We'll pretend I didn't drop it. <laughs> so what we do is we put the other glove on the same way. Here's the best part. See what I'm doing here? You now have gloves on, and we're worried about contaminating the finger areas, the things we're going to be using to touch. Now, if I was on my crime scene, I would now know that I've been touching this box, which we know is not sterile. But what we are going to do is we're going for a second pair. And there's a reason for that. By the way, breathing. I know that was nasty. But breathing. But breathing on your gloves, not helpful. There are reports. Oh, so I grabbed a finger, right? What are we going to do? We're still going to use it because I know these fingertips haven't touched anything. All right? So now I have another, another glove on, and we're going to do the same exact thing. So now I have a pair on one hand, a pair on the other hand. There's a reason that we double up. Number one, that was reaching into the box and making sure that this last pair that we put on, the outer pair, is the most clean. Now we have to be mindful of where we're touching during the investigation, right? So what we don't want to do is take the time and trouble to put on clean gloves that we know are pretty much contamination-free, at least we've given it a shot, 
And then we pick up something like our phone and we start taking pictures. Then we go and collect our DNA. That is what I mean by cross-contamination. I just touched a piece of evidence. I'm sorry, I just touched something that I know is not clean and now my gloves are dirty. So I have my double pairs on. And the reason we have the double pair on is because uh, it's not for extra protection for me, okay? Um, it's in case I get the outer pair contaminated. The longer we're on a scene, especially outside, our hands start to sweat and they get harder and harder to put on, take off. It, it becomes an issue. But what you can do is you can quickly, oh, you can quickly take off your contaminated pair and put on another pair, knowing that you haven't touched anything. Now, when you have your double pairs on and you're worried about contamination, I understand you're going to end up having to get comfortable with remembering that once you put them on, you can't touch anything. These are no-goes. There's no uh, sticking your hand in your pocket to get something. Once you do that, it's time to change the outer layer. Contamination, cross-contamination. It's That's what it is. Okay, so gloves. Once they're on, don't touch yourself or your clothes with them. So think about what you've touched during the investigation and ask yourself, should you be changing the outer gloves because of cross-contamination? So I talked about taking the gloves out of the box. How do we get them to our scenes if you don't want to take the entire box? The solution is quite simple. Now, I don't know of any studies that have been done to test the DNA inside or test the contamination of human DNA inside of Ziploc bags. But I do know if we treat the Ziploc bags the same way that we just treated taking the gloves out of their box, that you can basically do the same thing. Reach in, get your gloves, double up, take a bunch out of the box, stick them in a Ziploc bag and seal it. Now you do the same thing out in the field, but now you have them in a Ziploc bag. Interestingly enough, there was a small study done on possible DNA contamination on gloves from manufacturers. It's entitled, An Investigation of the Presence of DNA on Unused Laboratory Gloves. It was by Runa Daniel and Roland A.H. Van Orschott. It was published in 2011. Go to BigfootForensics.com and look under the Research tab. A PDF of the paper will be there. Also, I'll provide a link in the bottom. If you are that concerned, you can go online and you can actually just straight up buy DNA-free gloves or sterile gloves or sterile tweezers, anything you want. Uh, believe it or not, you can get it right on Amazon, or you can go to these particular websites, and um, there's some companies that we actually use at work. Arrowhead Forensics, Searchy, Shop Evident. Um, I think, oh, shoot, what's the other one? Oh, no. Tritech Forensics. I'm so sorry, guys. We love you. But uh, those are four main ones that you can get a lot of your crime scene stuff from. They sell... DNA-free, sterile instruments. It's not that expensive. Um, but like I said, you can forego the entire thing and you can go to Amazon. But I would also like to point out that there are particular gloves that you should steer away from, um, particularly if you're going to be dealing with any type of dermal ridge investigations. And we found that our lab that if you have something below a five mil glove, you run the risk of still transferring your own fingerprint evidence to the evidence. So if you wipe yourself and you have oils or other types of contamination on your glove, and then you touch a piece of evidence, you can still transfer your friction ridge patterns to them. So we found we had to double up on when using those kind of gloves. We actually did an experiment where we were touching stuff and then still being able to find fingerprint evidence. So that kind of sucks, um, but it's something to be aware of. Um, if you're not looking for fingerprints and you're just worried about cross-contamination for DNA and other contaminants and stuff like that, then pretty much choosing any style of glove will work for you. In the age of advanced forensic technology, evidence collected today may hold the key to solving age-old question of Bigfoot's existence in the future. Basically, we're preparing for investigations that may have gone cold. 
So by meticulously preserving evidence through the use of gloves, you can ensure that the future generations of investigators have access to untainted material, enabling them to unravel the mysteries that may have long remained unsolved. So in conclusion, the importance of wearing gloves on a scene can't be overstated. Beyond the simple act of donning protective gear, gloves represent the cornerstone of a forensic protocol, safeguarding the integrity of the evidence. Well, today's wasn't a long one. It was just a quick little tip and trick of the trade on how to put on gloves, what to watch out for. I hope you liked it. Hit like and subscribe. Let's keep our evidence clean.